Now let's go ahead and select the images here. I'm going to choose the raw files. I have raw plus JPEG here in the folder. So it's important when selecting that you choose only one type of file to give you the best overall results. All right, that looks good there. I've got my five files selected and I'll choose file, plugin extras, transfer to Aurora HDR. What this does is hands off the actual raw data and sends it to Aurora. Now you can see what's happening. In this case, I've got the full range, four stops under, two stops, base exposure, over two and over four. If you want, you can remove a bracket by just clicking up here if you had extras. Now, if this was handheld, I'd choose auto alignment, but I was on a tripod. But I am gonna to choose to remove any color noise and chromatic aberration because we have a window in the scene. If there was movement, I could choose ghost reduction, but that's not really an issue here for this photograph. I'll now click Create HDR, and it analyzes those five images, finding the best details of each. For the shadows image, it's going to find the highlights that were preserved in that deep, dark, underexposed image. And then in the brighter images, it's going to find detail in the shadows. These best details will be merged together with the base exposure to create a fuller tonal range of this particular scene. Now, to speed things up, I'm going to take advantage of Aurora Looks. I'll click here on the Looks browser and navigate to my architecture or the Randy Van Doinen Looks. These here are from a professional architecture photographer, and you'll see different options for scenes like interior daylight or interior tungsten light, and it changes the type of lighting in the scene. Let's go ahead with the high detail. I like that. Looking pretty close or we can switch on over here to the architecture and try something like detailed interior. And I like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is set the white balance. So using the eyedropper, I'll click on something that should be white and let it dial in the approximate setting. And you see that that did a nice job of removing some of the warmth color cast from the mixed lighting. Using Smart Tone, I can refine the overall exposure, but it's looking pretty good. Let's just turn on clipping indicators there, and I see ever so slightly some highlights that should be recovered. And that's going to bring back some of that depth outside the window. Let's just bring the whites up. That's looking really good. Using Smart Tone, you can dial that in to really refine it. That's looking great. Now what I'm going to do is take a look at the color settings, and I'll just put a little color contrast in, which makes those colors nice and rich. You can also put a small amount of structure in, and as you notice, it helps bring out some of the texture and the details in the wall, the floors, the carpets. I really like that. All right, that's looking very solid to me, and I've got a good exposure. If I toggle that on and off, you see that it really helped bring back some of the detail there. I like that. One of the things that I don't like, though, is that the windows need a little bit of enhancement. So I'm just gonna make a new adjustment layer here and grab my paintbrush. And what I'll do is just turn on the brush and click the eyeball here so I can see it and choose paint. This will allow me to get super specific and target that window area so we can deal with a spot color correction. There we go. I can just paint over that to be super specific. There we go. And now Using the controls here, we can actually further refine the feather even after we've painted to give this a gentler, smooth transition, like so. And you see it starts to dial in a softer overall setting. Let's take that right about there. Perfect. I'll turn the mask off. And now I can take advantage of color controls as well as the basic. This will allow me to adjust the color temperature for the outside independently and compensate with tint as well as exposure and the ability to knock down the color a little bit so it's just not so rich out there and not distracting. So by making that super targeted adjustment there, we could tone down that area outside the window and make it look so much better. And that's the benefit of having masks. All right, I'll click Done, and that saves that layer, and let's click Apply, and it kicks it back over to Lightroom. Now, once it goes to Lightroom, 
I have full control over great things like upright and sharpening. So in the case of an architecture photo, taking advantage of the upright adjustment can really help remove some of the distractions. So let's open this up and get some nice straight lines. We'll come on into the develop module and scroll down to upright. And you see we could do an auto adjustment, a level adjustment, or fix the vertical or a strong full adjustment. I actually like that there. It looks a lot better with good straight lines. And what I'm going to do is just slightly rotate this. That looks great. And I'll check constrain crop. And it punches in on the shot and removes the other area. Now, you've got full control here. So if you need to, you can continue to rotate or tilt that shot and it will continue to automatically fix. As you see, upright is a very powerful adjustment that makes it super easy to fix perspective issues. If you want, you can also click guided, which is very powerful. This will allow you to automatically set your own lines. So I can go right here on the floor and the ceiling and then click and define the back corner here, like so. And it does a great correction. If we undo the constrained crop there, there we go. Let's just toggle that off versus on. You see that easy fix. Remember, you do have the crop tool as well. So you can continue to refine this or adjust the framing as you see fit. I actually like that just a little better. Let's get some of that wall. There we go. And I'm just gonna nudge that over slightly, like so, and close that up. And now we've got a great crop, clean vertical lines and horizontal lines, and I really like that refinement. And remember, everything else you wanna do in Lightroom is still there. So if you prefer to do a little bit of extra sharpening, I'm just holding down the option of the Alt key there to define my edges. I can dial in additional sharpness, and that is so much more detail. If we look at the original photo, just doesn't cut it. But thanks to HDR, as well as some of the advanced adjustments here in Lightroom, we've got a beautifully lit scene really easily.